Question 1. What are the main causes of foodborne illness? A. Improper food storage. B. Poor personal hygiene. C. Undercooked foods. D. All of the above. Answer. D. All of the above. Foodborne illnesses can result from various factors, including improper food storage, poor personal hygiene, and consuming undercooked foods, among others. Question 2. How can cross-contamination be prevented in the kitchen? A. By using the same cutting board for meat and vegetables. B. By cooking all foods to the same temperature. C. By keeping raw and red D to eat foods separate. T. D. By washing hands with cold water only. Answer. C. By keeping raw and red DT foods separate. Preventing cross-contamination involves separating raw and cooked foods during storage and preparation. Question 3. Describe the steps for proper hand washing. A. Wet hands. Apply soap. Rinse under warm water. Use hand dryer. B. Apply soap. Scrub for 20 seconds. Rinse with water. Dry with a clean towel. C. Scrub hands with soap for 5 seconds. Rinse with cold water, air dry. D. Wet hands with hot water. Apply antibacterial gel. Wipe with paper towel. Answer. B. Apply soap. Scrub for 20 seconds. Rinse with water. Dry with a clean towel. Proper hand washing technique involves wetting hands, applying soap, scrubbing for at least 20 seconds, rinsing thoroughly, and drying with a clean towel. Question 4. What is the temperature danger zone? A. 0 degree Fahrenheit to 32 degree Fahrenheit. Negative 18 degree Celsius to 0 degree Celsius. B. 32 degree Fahrenheit to 68 degree Fahrenheit. 0 degree Celsius to 20 degree Celsius. C. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit. 4. 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. D. 145 degree Fahrenheit to 165 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius to 74 degree Celsius. Answer. C. 40 degree Fahrenheit to 140 degree Fahrenheit, 4. 4 degree Celsius to 60 degree Celsius. The temperature danger zone is the range in which foodborne bacteria can grow rapidly, increasing the risk of foodborne illness. Question 5. How should thermometers be calibrated? A. In a glass of boiling water. B. Using an ice water slurry. C. By leaving them in the freezer for 24 hours. D. Both A and B. Answer. D. Both A and B. Thermometers can be calibrated using the ice water slurry method for cold calibration or boiling water for hot calibration to ensure accuracy. Question 6. What are critical control points, CCP is, in AKCCP plan? A. Points where customer service is evaluated. B. Steps in a process where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. C. The temperature points for cooking food. D. The storage areas for raw materials. Answer. B. Steps in a process where hazards can be prevented, eliminated, or reduced to safe levels. CCPs are essential for controlling food safety hazards in an AKCCP plan. Question 7. Describe the process for receiving and inspecting food deliveries. A. Accept all deliveries, no inspection needed. B. Check the temperature packaging, and expiration dates of delivered items. C. Store deliveries immediately, inspect later. D. Only inspect deliveries randomly to save time. Answer. B. Check the temperature, packaging, and expiration dates of delivered items. Proper inspection ensures that only safe and high-quality foods are accepted. Question 8. How can foodborne pathogens be controlled during food storage? A. By storing all food at room temperature. B. Through proper labeling and date marking. C. By mixing older and newer products. D. Both A and C. Answer. B. Through proper labeling and date marking. This helps in following first-in, first-ought, FIFO, 
practices and keeping food out of the temperature danger zone. Question 9. What are the symptoms of foodborne illness? A. Dizziness and headaches. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. C. Increased appetite. D. Thirst and dry mouth. Answer. B. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and fever. These are common symptoms of foodborne illnesses, indicating the body's response to harmful bacteria or toxins. Question 10. How should a foodborne illness complaint be handled? A. Ignore it unless more complaints are received. B. Document the complaint, investigate, and report if necessary. C. Offer the customer a refund without further action. D. Blame the supplier immediately. Answer. B. Document the complaint, investigate, and report if necessary. Taking complaints seriously helps in identifying potential issues and preventing further illnesses. Question 11. What are the best practices for cooling hot foods? A. Leave at room temperature until cool. B. Place directly in the refrigerator. C. Use an ice water bath or blast chiller. D. Cover tightly and place in freezer. Answer. C. Use an ice water bath or blast chiller. Rapid cooling techniques help bring down the temperature of hot foods quickly to prevent bacterial growth. Question 12. Explain the importance of time temperature control for safety, TCS, foods. A. TCS foods do not require temperature control. B. Keeping TCS foods within safe temperature limits prevents bacterial growth. C. TCS foods are safer when left at room temperature. D. Time temperature controls are only necessary during cooking. Answer. B. Keeping TCS foods within safe temperature limits prevents bacterial growth. TCS foods are perishable items that need proper time and temperature control to prevent foodborne illness. Question 13. How should red D to eat foods be handled to prevent contamination? A. With bare hands for better control. B. With thought washing since they won't be cooked. C. With clean utensils and gloves, avoiding direct hand contact. D. Stored together with raw foods to save space. Answer. C. With clean utensils and gloves, avoiding direct hand contact. This practice minimizes the risk of contamination and ensures food safety. Question 14. What are the minimum internal cooking temperatures for various types of food? A. 135 degree Fahrenheit, 57 degree Celsius for all foods. B. Varies depending on the food, with poultry needing to reach 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. C. 145 degree Fahrenheit, 63 degree Celsius for meats and 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius for vegetables. D. 100 degree Fahrenheit, 38 degree Celsius for seafood and 200 degree Fahrenheit, 93 degree Celsius for beef. Answer B. Varies depending on the food, with poultry needing to reach 165 degree Fahrenheit, 74 degree Celsius. Different foods require specific minimum internal temperatures to ensure pathogens are destroyed. Question 15. How can allergen cross-contact be prevented in the kitchen? A. By cooking all foods at high temperatures. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergenic ingredients. C. Ignoring allergen concerns unless a customer mentions it. D. Washing hands with cold water only. Answer. B. Using separate equipment and utensils for allergenic ingredients. This helps in preventing cross-contact and ensuring the safety of customers with food allergies. Question 16. Describe the proper procedure for cleaning and sanitizing food contact surfaces. A. Wipe with a damp cloth only. B. Clean with soap and water, then sanitize with an appropriate sanitizer. C. Rinse with water only, air dry. D. Use bleach exclusively for all cleaning. Answer. B. Clean with soap and water, 
then sanitize with an appropriate sanitizer. This two-step process ensures surfaces are free from food residue and pathogens. Question 17. What are the requirements for a food safety management system? A. Only necessary for large restaurants. B. Includes identifying hazards, establishing critical limits, and monitoring procedures. C. Focused on menu design and customer service. D. Optional and based on preference. Answer. B. Includes identifying hazards, establishing critical limits, and monitoring procedures. A food safety management system is essential for controlling food safety risks. Question 18. How can pests be controlled in food service operations? A. By keeping doors and windows open at all times. B. Using only homemade remedies. C. Implementing integrated pest management practices. D. Pests are not a significant concern in modern kitchens. Answer. C. Implementing integrated pest management practices. Effective pest control involves prevention, monitoring, and using control methods when necessary. Question 19. What are the responsibilities of a food manager regarding employee health and hygiene? A. Ensure employees are well-dressed. B. Monitor health and enforce hygiene practices to prevent food contamination. C. Ignore minor health issues. D. Focus solely on cooking skills. Answer. B. Monitor health and enforce hygiene practices to prevent food contamination. A food manager plays a key role in maintaining a safe food environment. Question 20. Explain the process of conducting a self-inspection of a food service operation. A. It involves checking only the dining area. B. Assessing the establishment's adherence to food safety practices. C. Conducted by customers only. D. Focused on financial audits. Answer. B. Assessing the establishment's adherence to food safety practices. Regular self-inspections help identify and correct issues before they become significant problems. Question 21. How should chemicals be stored in a restaurant? A. Above food preparation areas for easy access. B. In the same area as food, but in clearly labeled containers. C. In a separate, clearly labeled area away from food. D. On the kitchen floor for convenience. Answer. C. In a separate, clearly labeled area away from food. Storing chemicals properly ensures they don't contaminate food or food contact surfaces. Question 22. What is the proper method for thawing frozen food? A. On the counter at room temperature. B. Under cold running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. C. In warm water to speed up the process. D. Using a hot oven. Answer. B. Under cold running water, in the microwave, or in the refrigerator. These methods ensure food is thawed safely, reducing the risk of bacterial growth. Question 23. Describe the guidelines for using gloves in food service. A. Gloves are optional for handling red D to eat food. B. Gloves should be washed and reused to save on costs. C. Gloves should be changed frequently and not be considered a substitute for hand washing. D. Use the same pair of gloves for handling raw meat and vegetables to minimize waste. Answer. C. Gloves should be changed frequently and not be considered a substitute for hand washing. Proper glove use prevents cross-contamination and maintains food safety. Question 24. What factors should be considered when designing a kitchen to ensure food safety? A. Color scheme and decoration style. B. Workflow, ease of cleaning, and prevention of cross-contamination. C. The number of dining seats available. D. The type of cuisine being served. Answer. B. Workflow, ease of cleaning, and prevention of cross-contamination. A well-designed kitchen can significantly reduce food safety risks. Question 25. How should a food recall be managed? A. By ignoring it unless customers complain. B. Immediately removing the affected product from inventory and following the manufacturer's or supplier's instructions. C. Using the product quickly before the recall becomes widely known. D. 
selling the product at a discount? Answer B. Immediately removing the affected product from inventory and following the manufacturer's or supplier's instructions. Quick action protects customers and maintains trust. Question 26. What are the roles of government agencies in ensuring food safety? A. Providing recipes and cooking tips. B. Regulating and inspecting food service establishments and enforcing food safety laws. C. Marketing local restaurants. D. Organizing food festivals. Answer. B. Regulating and inspecting food service establishments and enforcing food safety laws. Government agencies play a critical role in maintaining public health standards. Question 27. How should waste be properly managed in a food service operation? A. By disposing of it in the nearest water body. B. Through reduction, recycling, and proper disposal according to health regulations. C. Ignoring it until health inspectors note it as a violation. D. Burning it in the backyard of the establishment. Answer. B. Through reduction, recycling, and proper disposal according to health regulations. Effective waste management practices help maintain sanitation and safety. Question 28. What guidelines should be followed when serving food to high-risk populations? A. Serve foods at extreme temperatures. B. Use more spices and seasonings. C. Ensure food is cooked to safe temperatures and avoid high-risk foods like raw eggs and unpasteurized dairy. D. Offer only raw fruits and vegetables. Answer. C. Ensure food is cooked to safe temperatures and avoid high-risk foods like raw eggs and unpasteurized dairy. Special care is necessary to protect vulnerable groups from foodborne illness. Question 29. How should food temperatures be monitored during hot and cold holding? A. By guessing based on experience. B. Using appropriate thermometers to regularly check and record temperatures. C. Checking the temperature once a day. D. Relying on customer feedback. Answer. B. Using appropriate thermometers to regularly check and record temperatures. Regular monitoring ensures food is held at safe temperatures. Question 30. What is the proper procedure for washing fruits and vegetables? A. Rinse with hot water to kill bacteria. B. Soak in a soap solution for 10 minutes. C. Wash with water. Use a brush for firm produce. D. Spray with a vinegar solution only. Answer. C. Wash with water. Use a brush for firm produce. This method effectively removes dirt and reduces microbial contamination. Question 31. Describe the guidelines for preventing foodborne illness in a mobile food unit. A. Follow the same food safety practices as stationary food establishments. B. Only serve pre-packaged foods. C. Use disposable utensils for cooking. D. Cooking food is not allowed in mobile units. Answer. A. Follow the same food safety practices as stationary food establishments. Mobile units must adhere to food safety standards to protect public health. Question 32. How should live shellfish be received and stored to ensure safety? A. In a sealed container with thought ice. B. At room temperature. C. Alive and at specific temperatures, ensuring they are not submerged in water. D. Frozen until ready to use. Answer. C. Alive and at specific temperatures, ensuring they are not submerged in water. Proper storage conditions are crucial for maintaining the safety of live shellfish. Question 33. What are the signs of spoilage in food? A. Brighter color and firmer texture. B. Changes in color, odor, and texture. C. Packaging that looks undamaged. D. A sell-by date that has not yet passed. Answer. B. Changes in color, odor, and texture. These changes can indicate that food is no longer safe to consume. Question 34. How does the fade level of food affect food safety? A. Foods with a high pH are more prone to bacterial growth. B. 
Bacteria cannot grow in foods with low pH. C. For levels have no effect on food safety. D. Only acidic foods need to be refrigerated. Answer. A. Foods with a high pH are more prone to bacterial growth. Low pH, acidic, environments can inhibit the growth of many pathogens. Question 35. Describe the methods for safely reheating food. A. To room temperature on the counter. B. In a slow cooker on low heat. C. To at least 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degree Celsius. Through what? D. Under warm running water. Answer. C. To at least 165 degree Fahrenheit. 74 degree Celsius. Through hot, this ensures that any potential bacteria are killed during the reheating process. Question 36. How should a choking incident be addressed in a food service environment? A. Ignore it unless the customer collapses. B. Offer the customer a glass of water. C. Perform the Hamlet maneuver or call emergency services if necessary. D. Ask the customer to leave if they are causing a scene. Answer. C. Perform the Hamlet maneuver or call emergency services if necessary. Prompt and appropriate action can save a life in a choking incident. Question 37. What guidelines should be followed for serving food in a buffet setting? A. Allow customers to use their hands to pick up food. B. Use sneeze guards and keep foods at appropriate temperatures. C. Mix old and new batches of food to reduce waste. D. Serve all foods at room temperature. Answer. B. Use sneeze guards and keep foods at appropriate temperatures. These practices help protect food from contamination and keep it safe for consumption. Question 38. How can vacuum packaging impact food safety? A. It eliminates the need for refrigeration. B. Can extend shelf life but requires careful temperature control to prevent botulism. C. Vacuum-packed foods are sterile and free from bacteria. D. Increases the risk of spoilage due to oxygen removal. Answer. B. Can extend shelf life but requires careful temperature control to prevent botulism. Proper storage temperatures are crucial for vacuum-packed foods to ensure safety. Question 39. What are the considerations for food packaging and labeling in food service? A. Packaging is purely for aesthetic purposes. B. Labels should include ingredients, allergens, and use-by dates. C. Use the same packaging for all types of food to reduce costs. D. Labeling is optional for foods cooked and served immediately. Answer. B. Labels should include ingredients, allergens, and use-by dates. Proper packaging and labeling are important for informing consumers and preventing foodborne illness. Question 40. How can technology be used to enhance food safety practices? A. For online marketing only. B. Through digital temperature monitoring and inventory management systems. C. Technology has no real application in food safety. D. By replacing all manual tasks with robots. Answer, B, through digital temperature monitoring and inventory management systems. Technology can greatly improve the efficiency and effectiveness of food safety practices. Question 41, what are the best practices for employee training on food safety? A, provide training only to new hires. B, annual training sessions covering only the basics. C, regular, comprehensive training sessions for all staff members. D. Training is unnecessary if employees have previous experience. Answer. C. Regular, comprehensive training sessions for all staff members. Continuous education ensures all team members are up to date on the latest food safety practices and regulations. Question 42. How can a food service operation reduce its environmental impact while ensuring food safety? A. By using disposable plastics for all food storage. D. Ignoring food safety in favor of eco-friendly practices. C. Implementing sustainable practices like composting and recycling while adhering to food safety standards. 
safety, only sourcing food locally, regardless of safety standards? Answer C. Implementing sustainable practices like composting and recycling while adhering to food safety standards. Balancing environmental concerns with food safety is crucial for responsible operations. Question 43. What are the legal consequences of failing to adhere to food safety regulations? A. A polite warning. B. Minor fines only for repeated offenses. C. Possible fines, business closure, and legal action. D. Public apology required, but no financial penalties. Answer. C. Possible fines, business closure, and legal action. Violations of food safety regulations can lead to severe penalties, including financial and legal repercussions. Question 44. How should a food service operation respond to a natural disaster or emergency situation? A. Continue business as usual to maintain profits. B. Temporarily close and discard potentially compromised food. C. Only serve bottled water and canned food. D. Use the opportunity to market disaster-themed meals. Answer. B. Temporarily close and discard potentially compromised food. Safety should be the priority, with actions taken to prevent foodborne illness during and after emergencies. Question 45. What are the guidelines for food donation and handling leftovers? A. Food can be donated at any time, regardless of its condition. B. Leftovers should be discarded to avoid food safety risks. C. Follow food safety practices and local regulations for food donation and managing leftovers. D. Reuse leftovers in the kitchen to reduce waste, with thought regard for safety. Answer. C. Follow food safety practices and local regulations for food donation and managing leftovers. Safe handling ensures that donated food benefits those in need with thought compromising safety. Question 46. How should a food service operation manage customer food allergies? A. Assume customers will mention allergies with thought being asked. B. Train staff to inquire about allergies and handle allergen-free orders carefully. C. Offer only gluten-free and nut-free options to simplify operations. D. Ignore allergies due to the complexity of managing different requests. Answer. B. Train staff to inquire about allergies and handle allergen-free orders carefully. Awareness and proper handling can prevent allergic reactions and ensure customer safety. Question 47. What are the guidelines for effective food display and presentation to ensure safety? A. Use only artificial lighting to highlight food. B. Keep food at proper temperatures with protective barriers and change aught regularly. C. Display food for as long as it looks appealing, regardless of time. D. Focus on aesthetics over safety to attract customers. Answer. B. Keep food at proper temperatures with protective barriers and change aught regularly. Proper display practices prevent contamination and maintain food safety. Question 48. How can a food service operation ensure the safety of food delivered by a third party? A. Rely on the third party's food safety practices with thought verification. B. Check the temperature and condition of food upon arrival. C. Accept all deliveries with thought inspection to save time. D. Only order non-perishable items for delivery. Answer. B. Check the temperature and condition of food upon arrival. Verifying the safety of delivered food helps ensure it hasn't been compromised during transport. Question 49. What are the critical factors in maintaining food safety during food transport? A. Keeping food at the correct temperatures and avoiding cross-contamination. B. Transporting food as quickly as possible, regardless of temperature. C. Using any vehicle available, with thought concern for cleanliness. D. Packing food tightly together to reduce movement. Answer. A. Keeping food at the correct temperatures and avoiding cross-contamination. Proper temperature control and cleanliness during transport are essential for food safety. Question 50. 
How should incidents of food tampering or intentional contamination be handled? A. Treat them as low priority until harm is proven. B. Immediately report to authorities and follow emergency procedures. C. Handle internally with thought involving law enforcement. D. Use as a marketing tool to show resilience. Answer. B. Immediately report to authorities and follow emergency procedures. Swift action is necessary to protect public health and trust. Question 51. Describe the process for developing and implementing a food defense plan. A. It is only required for large corporations. B. Identify potential threats, establish preventative measures, and train employees. C. Copy plans from similar businesses to save time. D. Focus exclusively on digital security threats. Answer. B. Identify potential threats, establish preventative measures, and train employees. A comprehensive plan protects against intentional contamination. Question 52. How can a food service operation ensure compliance with local food safety regulations? A. By guessing the regulations and hoping for the best. B. Regularly reviewing and adhering to local health department guidelines. C. Assuming that if no one gets sick, they are in compliance. D. Waiting for a violation notice before making changes. Answer. B. Regularly reviewing and adhering to local health department guidelines. Staying informed and compliant with regulations is crucial for legal operation and public safety. Question 53. What is the importance of maintaining proper documentation and records for food safety? A. Documentation is only necessary for audits. B. It helps track food safety practices and provides proof of compliance. C. It's an outdated practice replaced by digital systems. D. Records should be kept secret for competitive advantage. Answer. B. It helps track food safety practices and provides proof of compliance. Proper documentation is essential for managing food safety and proving adherence to standards. Question 54. How should a food service operation manage its supplier relationships to ensure food safety? A. Choose suppliers based solely on price. B. Establish clear safety standards and regularly evaluate supplier compliance. C. Use as many suppliers as possible to diversify risk. D. Avoid asking suppliers about their food safety practices to maintain a good relationship. Answer. B. Establish clear safety standards and regularly evaluate supplier compliance. Careful selection and monitoring of suppliers are vital for ensuring the safety of sourced food. Question 55. What are the guidelines for effective pest exclusion and control? A. Pests are considered part of the natural ecosystem of a kitchen. B. Regular inspections, maintaining clean spaces, and sealing entry points. C. Use of pesticides by untrained staff as the primary method of control. D. Ignoring small infestations until they become significant. Answer. B. Regular inspections, maintaining clean spaces, and sealing entry points. Effective pest management involves preventing access, eliminating food sources, and professional extermination when necessary. Question 56. Describe the role of food safety audits and how they should be conducted. A. Audits are optional and conducted only when there is a problem. B. Performed by any employee when they have time. C. Regular, thorough reviews of food safety practices by qualified personnel. D. Outsourced to the lowest bidder regardless of their expertise. Answer. C. Regular, thorough reviews of food safety practices by qualified personnel. Audits help identify areas for improvement and ensure compliance with food safety standards. Question 57. How can the risk of norovirus be minimized in food service? A. By ensuring all food is cooked to high temperatures. B. Encouraging sick employees to stay home and implementing strict hand-washing policies. C. Limiting the use of raw ingredients. D. Spraying dining areas with disinfectant daily. Answer. B. 
encouraging sick employees to stay home and implementing strict hand-washing policies. Norovirus is highly contagious, and good hygiene practices are essential for prevention. Question 58. What are the best practices for marinating food safely? A. Marinate meat on the counter to enhance flavor absorption. B. Marinate in the refrigerator and never reuse marinade that has touched raw meat. C. Use the same marinade for multiple batches of meat to reduce waste. D. Only marinate meats for short periods to minimize risk. Answer. B. Marinate in the refrigerator and never reuse marinade that has touched raw meat. This prevents bacterial growth and cross-contamination. Question 59. How does high-temperature washing contribute to sanitization? A. It makes dishes dry faster. B. High temperatures can kill bacteria and other pathogens on surfaces. C. It is only for aesthetic purposes, making dishes look cleaner. D. High temperatures are less effective than cold water. Answer. B. High temperatures can kill bacteria and other pathogens on surfaces. Proper sanitization requires sufficient temperature to eliminate harmful microorganisms. Question 60. What are the guidelines for managing employee uniforms to prevent food contamination? A. Employees should wear their uniforms to and from work. B. Uniforms should be cleaned daily, with no personal items allowed in food prep areas. C. Casual clothing is preferred for comfort and flexibility. D. Sharing uniforms is encouraged to reduce laundry costs. Answer. B. Uniforms should be cleaned daily, with no personal items allowed in food prep areas. This helps maintain a hygienic food preparation environment. Question 61. Describe the impact of food safety culture on a food service operation. A. It has no real impact as long as regulations are followed. B. Creates an environment where safety is prioritized, reducing the risk of foodborne illness. C. Is only important for large restaurants, not small operations. D. Focuses on the speed of service over safety practices. Answer. B. Creates an environment where safety is prioritized, reducing the risk of foodborne illness. A strong food safety culture ensures that all staff members understand and commit to maintaining high safety standards. Question 62. What are the guidelines for safe ice handling and usage in food service? A. Ice should be treated as food and protected from contamination. B. Using bare hands to scoop ice is acceptable. C. Ice from the floor can be used as long as it's not visibly dirty. D. Ice only needs to be stored safely. How it's handled isn't important. Answer. A. Ice should be treated as food and protected from contamination. Proper handling and storage practices prevent the introduction of pathogens. Question 63. How should food service operations manage special dietary requests and preferences? A. By ignoring them, unless specified by law. B. Through careful menu planning and staff training to accommodate such requests safely. C. Offering only one type of dietary option to simplify operations. D. Charging extra for any dietary request to discourage them. Answer. B. Through careful menu planning and staff training to accommodate such requests safely. Understanding and catering to special dietary needs ensure customer satisfaction and safety. Question 64. What are the considerations for designing and maintaining hand washing stations? A. Stations should be limited to the kitchen area only. B. They must be easily accessible, equipped with soap, warm water, and drying materials. C. Hand washing stations are not necessary if hand sanitizer is available. D. A single hand washing station is sufficient for any size of operation. Answer. B. They must be easily accessible, equipped with soap, warm water, and drying materials. Proper facilities encourage regular hand washing, a critical practice for preventing foodborne illness. Question 65. How should cutting boards be used and maintained to prevent cross-contamination? A. 
use the same cutting board for all types of fruit to minimize cleaning. B. Color-coded boards for different food types, cleaned and sanitized after each use. C. Wooden boards are best for all foods because they are natural. D. Rinse with water only to avoid soap contamination. Answer. B. Color-coded boards for different food types, cleaned and sanitized after each use. This system helps prevent cross-contamination by keeping foods separate. Question 66. Describe the process for safely defrosting meat, poultry, and seafood. A. Leave at room temperature for several hours. B. Under refrigeration in cold water or in the microwave if cooking immediately after. C. In a warm oven to speed up the process. D. Defrosting is unnecessary. Cook from frozen to save time. Answer. B. Under refrigeration in cold water or in the microwave if cooking immediately after. These methods ensure that the food is kept at safe temperatures during thawing. Question 67. How should food service operations handle returned or refused items? A. Reuse them in other dishes to reduce waste. B. Discard immediately to prevent cross-contamination and food safety risks. C. Give them to employees as a perk. D. Store separately and reassess for future use. Answer. B. Discard immediately to prevent cross-contamination and food safety risks. Safety and quality assurance protocols necessitate disposing of these items properly. Question 68. What are the guidelines for preparing and serving food safely in outdoor settings? A. Food safety guidelines do not apply outdoors. B. Follow the same food safety practices as indoor settings, including temperature control and hand hygiene. C. Use only disposable utensils and dishes. D. Cooking temperatures can be lower outdoors due to ambient temperatures. Answer. B. Follow the same food safety practices as indoor settings, including temperature control and hand hygiene. Outdoor food service still requires adherence to food safety standards to protect against foodborne illnesses. Question 69. How can a food service operation ensure the effectiveness of its cleaning and sanitizing procedures? A. By cleaning only at the end of the day. B. Using the same cloth for all surfaces to ensure consistency. C. Regular training, monitoring, and use of test strips to verify sanitizer concentrations. D. Sanitizing is only necessary for visible dirt. Answer. C. Regular training, monitoring, and use of test strips to verify sanitizer concentrations. Effective cleaning and sanitizing practices are critical for maintaining a safe food preparation environment. Question 70. What are the guidelines for dry storage in food service operations? A. Store items directly on the floor for easier access. B. Keep areas cool, dry, and well-ventilated, with foods stored off the floor and away from walls. C. Humidity levels are not important in dry storage. D. Dry storage can double as a refuse area to save space. Answer. B. Keep areas cool, dry, and well-ventilated, with foods stored off the floor and away from walls. Proper dry storage conditions prevent spoilage and contamination. Question 71. How should food service operations manage the disposal of grease and oil? A. Pour it down the sink with hot water. B. Use a grease trap and ensure proper disposal according to local regulations. C. Dispose of grease and oil with regular trash. D. Store outside until it solidifies. Answer. B. Use a grease trap and ensure proper disposal according to local regulations. Proper disposal methods prevent plumbing issues and environmental contamination. Question 72. Describe the process for ensuring safe water supply in food service operations. A. Boil water before use, regardless of source. B. Regular testing and adherence to local health department recommendations. C. Use only bottled water for all cooking and drinking needs. D. Assume tap water is always safe with thought verification. Answer. B. 
regular testing, and adherence to local health department recommendations. Ensuring water safety is crucial for preventing contamination and protecting public health. Question 73. What are the guidelines for managing food during power outages or equipment failures? A. Continue using sensitive equipment until the issue is resolved. B. Discard any potentially unsafe food and monitor temperatures closely. C. Keep doors closed to refrigeration and freezing units to maintain temperatures as long as possible. D. Both B and C are correct. Answer. D. Both B and C are correct. Minimizing food safety risks during power outages or equipment failures requires careful management of temperatures and disposal of potentially compromised foods. Question 74. How should allergen-free meals be prepared and served to avoid cross-contact? A. In the same area as other meals using shared equipment. B. With designated equipment and prep areas following strict protocols. C. Quickly to minimize time in the kitchen. D. With thought gloves to prevent latex contamination. Answer. B. With designated equipment and prep areas following strict protocols. Dedicated spaces and equipment help prevent cross-contact and ensure the safety of allergen-free meals. Question 75. What is the significance of food temperature logs and how should they be maintained? A. Optional records that can be ignored if the kitchen is busy. B. Important for tracking cooking, holding, and cooling temperatures to ensure food safety. C. Only necessary for foods prone to spoilage. D. Maintained yearly for audit purposes only. Answer. B. Important for tracking cooking, holding, and cooling temperatures to ensure food safety. Temperature logs are a critical part of food safety management, helping to verify that proper procedures are followed. Question 76. How can cross-contact of allergens in food be prevented? A. By using the same utensils for all types of food. B. Through thorough cleaning and separate prep areas for allergenic ingredients. C. Ignoring minor allergens as they're not a significant risk. D. Cooking all food to high temperatures to destroy allergens. Answer. B. Through thorough cleaning and separate prep areas for allergenic ingredients. Preventing cross-contact is essential for the safety of customers with food allergies. Question 77. What are the best practices for using microwave ovens in food preparation? A. Cooking foods from frozen to save time. B. Stirring or rotating food midway through cooking for even heating. C. Only using plastic containers to prevent sparking. D. Setting the microwave to the highest power for all foods. Answer. B. Stirring or rotating food midway through cooking for even heating. This ensures that food is cooked evenly, preventing cold spots where bacteria can survive. Question 78. Describe the process for safely serving food to children in schools. A. Serve the same portions as adults but with more sugar for energy. B. Ensure that food is cooked to safe temperatures and that high-risk foods are avoided. C. Use bulk dispensers for all foods to minimize waste. D. Children should be encouraged to share food to teach community values. Answer. B. Ensure that food is cooked to safe temperatures and that high-risk foods are avoided. Serving food safely to children involves special considerations to accommodate their vulnerability to foodborne illnesses. Question 79. How should a food service operation respond to a health inspection? A. By closing the establishment until the inspector leaves. B. Welcoming the inspector and providing all requested information and access. C. Offering the inspector free meals or discounts. D. Hiding any potential violations before the inspector notices. Answer. B. Welcoming the inspector and providing all requested information and access. A cooperative and transparent approach to health inspections demonstrates a commitment to food safety. Question 80. What are the best practices for using and maintaining thermometers in a food service operation? A. Calibrating daily before use and ensuring they are used for their intended purpose. B. 
using a single thermometer for both hot and cold foods to maintain consistency. C. Calibration is only necessary when a thermometer seems inaccurate. D. Storing thermometers in a warm place to prevent damage. Answer. A. Calibrating daily before use and ensuring they are used for their intended purpose. Proper calibration and use ensure accurate temperature readings, critical for food safety. Question 81. How can a food service operation manage the risk of salmonella in eggs? A. Serve eggs raw to preserve nutrients. B. Store eggs at room temperature to maintain flavor. C. Cook eggs to the recommended temperatures and avoid cross-contamination. D. Use only brown eggs as they are less likely to contain salmonella. Answer. C. Cook eggs to the recommended temperatures and avoid cross-contamination. Proper cooking and handling practices are essential to minimize the risk of salmonella. Question 82. Describe the guidelines for food service employees to follow when they are sick. A. Continue working but avoid direct contact with food. B. Report illness to management and stay home if experiencing symptoms like fever, vomiting, or diarrhea. C. Wear a mask and gloves at all times. D. Take over the counter medication to reduce symptoms before shifts. Answer. B. Report illness to management and stay home if experiencing symptoms like fever, vomiting, or diarrhea. Preventing sick employees from working is crucial to avoid spreading illness. Question 83. What are the critical elements of a successful food safety training program? A. Focusing solely on cooking techniques. B. Comprehensive coverage of food safety principles, regular updates, and practical application. C. Once-a-year training sessions with thought assessments. D. Online courses only, without any in-person demonstrations. Answer. B. Comprehensive coverage of food safety principles, regular updates, and practical application. Effective training programs ensure staff are knowledgeable and can apply food safety practices correctly. Question 84. How should a food service operation manage its food inventory to prevent waste while ensuring safety? A. By ordering in bulk and using items as needed. B. Implementing a first-in, first-out, FIFO, system and regular inventory checks. C. Ignoring expiration dates to reduce inventory turnover. D. Using damaged or expired items for employee meals. Answer. B. Implementing a first-in, first-out, FIFO, system, and regular inventory checks. This approach helps manage inventory effectively, ensuring food safety and reducing waste. Question 85. What are the guidelines for preparing food safely in high-volume operations? A. Preparing food well in advance and reheating before service. B. Maintaining high standards of hygiene, temperature control, and cross-contamination prevention, regardless of volume. C. Using convenience foods exclusively to save time. D. Lowering cooking temperatures to cook large batches evenly. Answer. B. Maintaining high standards of hygiene, temperature control, and cross-contamination prevention, regardless of volume. S safety standards must be upheld to protect customers, even in high-volume settings. Question 86. Describe the process for sanitizing dishes and utensils in a three-compartment sink. A. Rinse, wash in hot water, and air dry. B. Wash with detergent, rinse in clean water, and sanitize in a chemical solution. C. Soak in soapy water, rinse with a hose, then stack to dry. D. Use bleach water for washing, rinsing, and drying. Answer. B. Wash with detergent, rinse in clean water, and sanitize in a chemical solution. This method ensures that dishes and utensils are properly cleaned and sanitized. Question 87. How should a food service operation handle complaints of foodborne illness? A. Dismiss them unless accompanied by a doctor's note. B. Investigate promptly, document the complaint, and report to the health department if necessary. C. Offer the customer a refund and forget the incident.
D. Blame the supplier immediately with thought investigation. Answer. B. Investigate promptly, document the complaint, and report to the health department if necessary. Taking complaints seriously helps identify potential issues and prevents further illness. Question 88. What are the guidelines for safe food sampling and tasting in food service operations? A. Tasting is not allowed due to the risk of contamination. B. Use clean utensils for each taste and avoid direct contact with the serving dish. C. Sample directly from the cooking pot to save on washing up. D. Have customers taste food for quality checks. Answer. B. Use clean utensils for each taste and avoid direct contact with the serving dish. This practice prevents contamination and ensures food safety during tasting. Question 89. How can a food service operation ensure the safety and quality of its buffet offerings? A. By keeping foods at proper temperatures, using sneeze guards, and refreshing dishes regularly. B. Offering only cold dishes to avoid temperature concerns. C. Letting food sit out as long as it looks appetizing. D. Using leftover foods from previous service to reduce waste. Answer. A. By keeping foods at proper temperatures, using sneeze guards, and refreshing dishes regularly. These actions help maintain safety and quality in buffet service. Question 90. What are the best practices for food safety in catering and event planning? A. Preparing foods days in advance to spread out workload. B. Applying the same food safety standards as in a restaurant, including temperature controls and cross-contamination prevention. C. Using disposable utensils and dishes for all events. D. Catering exclusively outdoor events to minimize contamination risks. Answer. B. Applying the same food safety standards as in a restaurant, including temperature controls and cross-contamination prevention. Maintaining high safety standards is essential, regardless of the event setting. Question 91. How should a food service operation manage the use of chemical sanitizers to ensure food safety? A. Use in large quantities to guarantee surface cleanliness. B. Follow manufacturer instructions for proper dilution and contact time. C. Mix different sanitizers for enhanced effectiveness. D. Reserve for end-of-day cleaning only to save time. Answer. B. Follow manufacturer instructions for proper dilution and contact time. Correct use of sanitizers ensures they are effective with thought, posing a risk to food or customers. Question 92. Describe the role of food service managers in promoting a culture of food safety. A. Delegating all responsibility to the health department. B. Leading by example, providing training, and enforcing food safety practices. C. Focusing on profitability over safety. D. Assuming staff will learn food safety on their own. Answer. B. Leading by example, providing training, and enforcing food safety practices. Managers play a key role in shaping the food safety culture within their operations. Question 93. What are the guidelines for safe and effective food transportation within a food service operation? A. Food can be transported in any vehicle as long as it arrives quickly. B. Use dedicated, clean vehicles and containers that maintain food at safe temperatures. C. Pack food tightly to prevent movement, regardless of temperature. D. Transport raw and cooked foods together to save space. Answer. B. Use dedicated, clean vehicles and containers that maintain food at safe temperatures. Proper transportation practices prevent contamination and temperature abuse. Question 94. How can a food service operation ensure the safety of gluten-free and allergen-free menu items? A. By offering a limited menu to avoid cross-contact. B. Preparing these items separately using dedicated equipment and storage areas. C. Assuming all customers are exaggerating their dietary restrictions. D. Using gluten-free labels on all menu items to simplify service. Answer. B. 
preparing these items separately using dedicated equipment and storage areas. This approach minimizes the risk of cross-contact and ensures the safety of customers with dietary restrictions. Question 95. What are the considerations for safely incorporating locally sourced foods into a food service operation? A. Local foods are always safer and require no safety checks. B. Apply the same food safety standards as for other sources, including verification of practices and proper handling. C. Use locally sourced foods immediately, bypassing standard receiving procedures. D. Only source locally in peak season to ensure safety. Answer. B. Apply the same food safety standards as for other sources, including verification of practices and proper handling. Ensuring safety is crucial, regardless of the food's origin. Question 96. How should a food service operation respond to food tampering or intentional contamination incidents? A. Ignore unless there is significant customer backlash. B. Immediately remove affected products, notify authorities, and follow crisis management procedures. C. Address the issue through social media only. D. Wait for official instructions before taking any action. Answer. B. Immediately remove affected products, notify authorities, and follow crisis management procedures. Prompt action is essential to ensure public safety and trust. Question 97. Describe the guidelines for maintaining safe cooking temperatures in a fast-paced kitchen. A. Guessing temperatures based on cooking times. B. Regularly using and calibrating thermometers to verify temperatures. C. Lowering temperatures to speed up cooking during busy times. D. Focusing on presentation over temperature accuracy. Answer. B. Regularly using and calibrating thermometers to verify temperatures. Accurate temperature measurement is critical for food safety, regardless of kitchen pace. Question 98. How can a food service operation effectively manage food allergen information for customers? A. By providing detailed allergen information on menus and training staff to answer questions. B. Assuming customers will inform staff about their allergies with thought prompting. C. Offering only allergen-free dishes to simplify operations. D. Removing allergen-containing items from the menu permanently. Answer. A. By providing detailed allergen information on menus and training staff to answer questions. Transparency and knowledge enable customers to make safe choices and reduce the risk of allergic reactions. Question 99. What are the best practices for personal hygiene in food service, including handling personal items? A. Personal items should be stored with food to save locker space. B. Employees should be allowed to eat and drink in the kitchen to stay hydrated and energized. C. Maintaining strict personal hygiene and storing personal items away from food areas. D. Personal hygiene is less important than food preparation speed. Answer. C. Maintaining strict personal hygiene and storing personal items away from food areas. Good hygiene practices prevent contamination and ensure a safe food preparation environment. Question 100. How should a food service operation approach the development and implementation of a comprehensive food safety program? A. By copying the programs of similar establishments. B. Through collaboration with local health departments and customization to fit the operation's specific needs. C. Considering it only after a food safety incident occurs. D. Implementing a generic, one-size-fits-all program. Answer. B. Through collaboration with local health departments and customization to fit the operation's specific needs. A tailored food safety program addresses specific risks and promotes effective management practices.